Hi, welcome back to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. Malachi Greb, CEO Engineer of Elite Automation. Today, we might just have the lowest cost PLC on the market. What we have here is a Phoenix Contact PLC V8C. I'll list the whole entire part name somewhere in here, maybe. So this is the second generation of this PLC, and this thing comes in at the a low price point of like 100 bucks for the actual PLC module. Given, you do need uh, some relays to go with it, but we'll get to those in here in just in a second. So this thing starts out and gives you eight inputs. So you have eight inputs, and then from there, it has eight configurable I.O. points. So those I.O. points could be anything from an output, an input, an analog, uh, and then the inputs and outputs can be basically a slew of different relay types. So you could have a solid state relay, a traditional relay. They have relays that go from like 10 amps. And then you can even get inputs for this thing that can accept pretty much any input type as well. So uh, 24 volts DC, 120 AC, 230 AC, uh, which is like pretty extremely incredible that this thing has the versatility to be convertible to as many different I.O. types as they as they are. And you can have analog inputs or outputs for this thing. Overall, for the price of this thing and how convertible it is, it's pretty dang crazy. So let's go ahead and jump over to the form factor of the relay and what that looks like. All right, so here you have the eight inputs that it starts off with. And these are non-configurable. These are just stuck being the eight inputs. And then you also have some status indicators up here as well that kind of just indicate uh, some different statuses of the device itself and then also for inputs as well. And then here's your programming port, which is just a micro USB. And when it comes to programming this thing, make sure you have a micro USB that communicates data uh, because if you don't and it's just a charging type of USB, then you're obviously not going to be able to connect with it. Uh, another something that's, that this thing offers that I think is slightly weird is the fact that this thing has a memory port for being able to plug in a port for doing like automatic backups, and which is really cool. I feel like a cool feature. I just think it's kind of weird, like the memory ports that they used. Uh, I feel like they should just use like put an SD card or something in it and, and just done it that way versus having a weird port. And then you had to buy like a special adapter for it. And then you can actually program to it wirelessly. Uh, they have like a wireless adapter to be able to program to this thing. But I don't know. I'd rather either seen like an SD port on there and just been able to use SD card. And I don't think there's an Ethernet option. But if there is an Ethernet option, I'd like to be able to connect to this thing over Ethernet. But really, whenever you're talking something this low cost, you're generally not going to be dealing with a bunch of different stuff that has Ethernet. This is going to be for like a small system that you have that you're wanting to keep really low cost and, and not really and not spend too much money on. This thing is expandable up to 48 I.O. points. So you can buy two more expansion modules that attach to this PLC. And that gives you a total of 48 I.O. points. And I believe all the other expandable I.O. points, if I'm not mistaken, are, are configurable as well. So let's, let's go ahead and jump over to the relays real quick. So this is the relay form factor. So it's kind of just Phoenix's standard relay. I'll put some in the description below for like the part number of these. Now these are just the push-in style, which I love that the push-in style terminals. I think everything should go to the push-in style terminals. They're just super freaking handy. Like what's the point of using a screwdriver these days? And then so you would basically just have a whole sleeve of these, a total of eight, if you just have one base module like this. And then this thing plugs into it. So let's show you what it looks like plugged in, show you how easy it is to connect. I don't have these on a den rail, so I'm not making, my, making this easy for myself. And there we go. So there it is. See it attached to the, the relays right there? Pretty freaking cool. Um, I love the form factor, and the, they did a really good job on the engineering. And like when this thing is paired with a relay, you almost can't even tell that this is like a secondary device mounted to just regular relays. You know, and another thing that is very advantageous about this device, especially if you're already using these Phoenix relays, if you are already using these Phoenix relays, you could have a whole drawer of inputs and outputs and just the, the whole entire uh, matrix of different relay types that they have. And if you need to change something on this, like if you're only, maybe you're only using the first six and you decide, oh, you know what? Let, let's change that to an input. We need an analog input. You just unplug the card and then there you go. You unplug your card. You want to unplug another one? That easy. Then you just jump into the software and configure this to be whatever style input or output you want it to be, and you're you're off running again. 
I like stuff like that a lot. I mean, that's what's one thing that is a very big deal for like elite automation as a company is we don't like to wait around for stuff too much. We like to be able to swap. If we need to change something, we change it now. So we'll utilize stuff like point IO and have a bunch of extra cards laying around. That way, if somebody ever does make a mistake in engineering, like it never happens, that we're able to just hurry up and swap something out and, and be rolling again. Like there's no pauses in, in our workflow. So th that right there is like a huge plus, a huge value add, being able to swap out these relays like this. You can just use these relays on a regular job. It doesn't even have to go with this PLC. So just having these type of relays laying around is not hurting you any in the sense of they could be used as spares for anything else. So you could have one of these $100 modules in a storeroom and you could have all these relays in a storeroom as well and you could build one of these PLCs from, from the stuff that's just in the storeroom and, and, and only spend a couple hundred bucks. Which a lot of other PLCs, you know, it's kind of hard to have all that stored and then have every different model configuration available, like all the different input styles and output styles. You know, there's a quite a bit of expense to that whereas like for maybe like two thousand dollars you could have enough to set up one of these plcs to be any configuration that you want it whether you want it all eight inputs all eight outputs all eight analog there might be some limitation to the analog i'm not positive on that but i'm wanting to say there may be some type of limitation with that but maybe not maybe not if, if i find out for sure i'll put something in the comments below so before i move on this particular model right here is about 99 dollars list price and then if you want the expandable version of this mo module uh, it's $115, and then for the actual expansion modules themselves, it's $61. I personally, you know, prefer them not have two different models for an expandable version versus a non-expandable version. I guess it's, you know, it's a marketing tactic, a marketing strategy, or whatever that offering different models and different price points. I guess that makes sense, but to me personally, I would almost always rather pay the $115 and get the expandable version because you never know what you're going to run into. Uh, like I said, I like to have the expandable or, or, or I like to have the most flexible option. So that way, if we ever need to change anything, we can change it as quickly as possible. If you have any questions on the hardware, drop it down in the comments below. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. Uh, we kind of did a good general hardware run through and overview. I'll put it in the link in the description below of the software side of this video just because I don't like to keep videos too long. So there'll be a software side. We'll go more into like the programming side of this of this device. And uh, that video may not be out for like a week. So if you're watching this video, like as soon as it posts, the software side of the video won't be out just yet. But sure, sh we should have it out by the end of the week. We'll see. Um, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this product. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. You know, it's kind of hard to beat something at this price point and the flexibility that it has. I think those are two big things that a lot of people look for and, and it's one of the things that we look for, especially the flexibility side of things. Uh, so this is going to be like a perfect solution for like, uh, if we have like a little conveyor and we have some logic going on within that conveyor, like some IO points and it's like a standalone conveyor and it's acting like its own standalone machine. That'd be perfect. Or maybe even some small jig stuff. If you're doing some small jigs, you know, this something like this might be perfect. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. If there's any systems that we can help you guys implement, don't hesitate to reach out. Business card will be at the end of this video. You know, we do full system integration, specializing in robotic cells. And we also do stuff where we're implementing small little conveying systems. Uh, we do like mobile autonomous robots and then offer a bunch of other services like simulations electrical engineering mechanical engineering pretty much everything that goes into re doing a robotic cell we offer that as a service as well we also have uh on-site programming support so just keep that in mind shall you ever need anything catch you on the next one